I've got your answers. All right, so today we're gonna hook up a wireless outdoor motion sensor with a wireless sensor um, to be able to transmit back to your control panel. Um, it, depending on the control panel that you're using will determine the transmitter that you get. So today we're gonna use a Visonic transmitter and then the outside VX402R. So in the kit, or if you bought a kit or an extra sensor separately, you get the transmitter and then a magnet and mounting hardware. You won't be using any of that stuff. We're just gonna be using this transmitter by itself. So we can put that stuff aside. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is um, we're gonna open up the transmitter inside. So we'll do that first. And just remove the cover. So what we have is there's a set of screw terminals inside that we'll use to wire from here into this device. The device is a little bit bigger because this inside will house this transmitter and then the nine volt battery that you're gonna need to operate this unit. Uh, this doesn't come with a battery, so you'll need to provide it with one nine volt. So what we do is now that we have the cover off that and the screw terminals there and the batteries in this device already, we're gonna open up this device. This motion opens in three parts first part being the cover and inside here you have your, your wiring terminals that we're going to be using some of these to, to wire into this and then wire up the battery inside the device you'll take one of these black plugs out on this side and or move it and underneath there's a set screw here and then a set screw here this keeps this whole piece with the back assembly so we're going to go ahead and take this apart all right so once you get the screws loose just pull the unit apart and set that aside for right now okay so inside you have your 9 volt battery adapter which we're going to wire into this um, these units here are for using a different style of battery I'm just black and on these black and the red if you had like a, like a battery pack of some sort you can actually, um, or they say that you can wire these in to a transmitter and then just clip them in with the battery like this, but we're not going to be doing that. We'll use a separate 9 volt battery, which is always better to conserve the battery power off the transmitter. This way that each device runs on its own backup battery. Velcro strips, if you want to use those, you can actually mount the Velcro strips inside your transmitter and keep it separate inside so it's stuck to the back plate. Um, for this demonstration, we're not going to use that either. So we're just going to set that aside. Now, with the VX402R, they do provide you a little bit of wire. I'm going to use my own, but you can use this here if you'd like. Um, and this is actually going to wire from here uh, to the transmitter into the, this unit here. So today, we're going to go ahead and use my own wire. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and flip this thing over. And on the back, You'll see the same sponge knockouts. Um, you can pull the sponge pieces out. They can probably go better from that side. Then just take one of those out. And then we gotta insert our battery wire. So we'll feed that right through here. And then we'll wire it to this unit. So the terminals on this unit are all labeled. You have your power, plus and minus, and then alarm. Uh, normally closed, common, and then NO, which stands for normally open. So being that this is our 9 volt power adapter, we're going to go red with positive and then black with negative. We'll just slide that into the terminal and then tighten the screw up on top of it. And same thing with the positive wire in the positive. Tighten this screw down good. So we have our, our 9 volt wired into the back. And then we're going to use our own wire here. So we'll feed this through the bottom of the transmitter. And then for this uh, application, when you're using wireless transmitters, we're going to be using the normally closed and common um, terminals here. We'll use normally closed, which is the NC, and then the COM in the middle. And there's no polarity here, so it doesn't matter which way these two wires go. They can go in either direction. So just use one wire to each terminal. 
and tighten these all down. And I usually pull this through so there's no excess wire in here. And then we're going to take our black sponge piece that we pulled out earlier. And we'll go ahead and tuck that back in there so we don't get any kind of rodents or anything like that in varmints, spiders or anything in here. Okay, so now that we have this wired, um, something you can do is you can actually mount this plate first. This is actually what's going to mount to the wall. So if you look at the bottom, there's spots for your screws to come through on the top and the bottom here. And it tells you printed in the plastic what side is up. So you want to make sure that you get that right when you mount it. You don't want to mount this upside down. And then, um, and then we can go ahead and once this plate is mounted and we have all this put together, then we can go ahead and screw this on here very easily and put the cap on it for its final location. So we'll wire this transmitter in. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just take our two wires that we're going to use for our transmitter. And we're going to bring these right through the bottom. There's a hole here on the bottom for the trans or for the wiring to come through. You want to make sure you do that because we're going to have to put the cap back on this transmitter. So make sure we get our wiring through. And I usually pull excess through because it's kind of hard to get our wiring in. So I'll pull a few inches through. And this is kind of the same as wiring to the N and C and C in here. Where it's just one wire to each terminal and it doesn't matter which way they go. Just one wire to each terminal. And then the second wire to the other terminal. And then usually what I'll do is just push this straight up and pull a wire right through it. So we don't have any excess wire in here. Just like that. So now what we'll do is we'll reinstall the cap onto the wireless transmitter. Right, just like this. Make sure that that LED light, if you're using a Visonic transmitter, pokes through the hole at the top of the case. And then just go ahead and screw this back together. Like so. And then now we can hook up our 9 volt battery to this device. So we'll do that. Okay. So now we're ready to put it all together. So now that you have this unit mounted, or you know the back plate mounted, what you can do is you'll take this transmitter and the battery, and basically what you'll do is you'll just, uh, if you're using a Velcro, you can go ahead and stick it back in there. Just lay your transmitter in, your backup battery, and make sure that your wire is all tucked in there good. And then what we do is just simply, this usually, and press it down, make sure that it makes a good tight seal, and then tighten your two screws up. And then you just install the cap, hooks on from the top, and back down. Tighten this one up here. And now that that's all done, you're ready to enroll your transmitter.